Yo, what's good, Knicks Nation? Welcome back to another Game of the Week preview. We are previewing the New York Knicks facing the Philadelphia 76ers not once, but twice from Sunday and Tuesday. And who better to join me other than Dave Early? You can go catch him covering the uh, Philadelphia 76ers for Liberty Ballers, part of the SB Nation Network. All right, but before we get into it and ask Dave how he's doing, make sure to hit that thumbs up button for your boys. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And make sure to support our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to a $100 match. Also, make sure to check out KnicksFanTV.com, all right? We got some great articles over there by some very talented writers. So make sure to support the website as well. Dave, my man, welcome hey, back. Thank it's, you it's so been much. A minute. Yeah, it's, it's been, been a minute. minute. How are you doing? I'm well, I'm well. I appreciate you guys having me, always. Of course, man. I mean, you you got the scoop on the Philadelphia 76ers. I mean, we got this, you know, important matchup for many reasons. One, not only is it playoff positioning at this point, you know, both teams dealing with a lot of injuries, but this could be a potential matchup now, you know, uh, in the playoffs between the Knicks and the Sixers. And this is like a little mini series. You know, we talk about tomorrow's game on Sunday and then we got a break and then Tuesday we play again. So it does feel like a mini playoffs, if you will, between both teams. So it, it's going to be, I know they're not fully healthy, but it'll still be fun nonetheless. There's going to be a lot of playoff implications. Um, you know, a lot of Sixers fans now are accepting this very real possibility of the plane. The last time we spoke, Joel was still relatively healthy. I mean, I know he had some knee swelling to deal with, but Sixers fans on the one hand weren't really worried about the Knicks. And now when I talk to my Knicks fans, friends, they're not really worried about the Sixers. So a lot mm. has a lot has flopped in the time that's gone by for us. Yeah, a lot has changed. And look how look, man. This is what I love about the NBA season is that it's it's very fluid. Things are constantly changing. And you just gotta stay like water, man. You just gotta stay even keel. Can't be too high, can't be too low. But let's get into this. Let's, let me ask you a few questions about the Sixers, man, before we get into the matchup. With Tyrese Maxey now having a concu- uh dealing with a concussion, you still have Joel Embiid, who is just TBD on when he will return based on his knee injury. What's been your feelings about this current state of the Philadelphia 76ers? Without Tyrese in there, uh, it's it's been pretty rough. I mean, they can go into a stadium and get a win, you know, against a good team. We've seen them beat the Heat. We've seen them, uh, you know, help beat the Mavericks at times on the road. But if he's unavailable, and Sixers fans are hoping he will be for this, you know, both two at the Garden – Uh, It's going to be pretty rough. It'll be much easier for Tibbs to kind of scheme against them with Kyle Lowry running the offense. He doesn't have the same amount of juice that Tyrese does, obviously, at this stage. He's still a good player. He could still make the right reads, but it puts pressure on everyone. It has this compounding effect where you see Buddy Heald came in scorching hot when Maxie was peak um, when they first made that trade. But he struggled a little bit, I think, you know, they're asking him now to do things that aren't ideally his game, things like putting the ball on the floor. Mm-hmm. And it makes it, it makes it tough for the Sixers to win these days. You know, Nico Batum has been in and out with dealing with some stuff as well. So I think they've been hit as hard maybe as any team in terms of what you lose, 26 and 8 with him beating the lineup. And it's felt like a lost cause without him for a lot of it. Is there any stats on when Joel Embiid will come back? I mean, Maxi is TBD for this Knicks series, so he could be back, you know, tomorrow, if not tomorrow, Tuesday. But for Embiid, it just feels like there's still just this, like, mystery as to when he will return. Yeah, with with Tyree, I don't know, you guys follow football a little bit too. Usually when they have that full week, when a guy's in concussion protocol, you kind of expect them to get to get out of it by the end of the week and play in that game. It's rare for a guy to miss like three games in a row in football. So I wouldn't be shocked if Tyrese passed his protocol, but you never know. You know, you never know what symptoms he's dealing with. And at this stage in the game for the Sixers, maybe there's an impetus to be conservative, depending on your mindset, or maybe mm-hmm. there's the impetus that we absolutely need him. Not that the medics would rush him either way. But Joel, the timeline is pretty murky. I know we've heard reports pretty recently that they are hopeful and optimistic it would be somewhere around late March, early April. We did a Liberty Ballers poll and asked our fans, and most of them were split between those two timelines. Joel himself has kept it close to the chest and said, you know, when I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm not going to put any timeline on it. 
He did also mention that the standings and where the team is won't impact his decision. So I thought that was interesting if you believe him. You know, if they're uh, if they're looking to get a six seed, you know, you hop on basketball reference playoff probabilities. Right now, the Sixers are sort of in that like five, six, seven, eight bucket where mm-hmm. a five, six would be pretty good the way they're playing. A, you know, the seven, eight and being in the plane is looking more and more realistic. So would Joel come back early to help them avoid the plane where you can lose in one game or two, you know, mm-hmm. or get that 60 where you can buy an entire week off before the playoff starts, which could be invaluable for a team like the Knicks too. If they've got guys coming back, you know, you get to watch the plan for about five days, I think before the actual playoff starts. So I don't know. I, I guess if you ask me to put money on it, I would say he tries to come back in early April, but your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> and and then well, in what state, you know, cause he takes a little while to ramp up in what state he's not going to be in peak conditioned MVP form like he was. He admitted he was dealing with some knee swelling before he got the meniscus in Golden State. So I'm not even sure what to expect when he gets out there. But if he were somehow healthy, they'd be a pretty scary first round team for anyone. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you have an MVP caliber candidate. You have Tyrese Maxey, who should win most improved this season. I mean, between those two alone, you should be like, that's a good first round match. That's a good, you should have confidence if you're a Sixers fan in a first round matchup, if you have those two guys on the floor. And for the Knicks, I mean, we're in the same boat, man. We're dealing with injuries. I mean, we 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 didn't have Jalen Brunson against the Atlanta Hawks. We just got him back last night to help us defeat the Orlando Magic, giving them the molly whopping that they deserved after they were all talking spicy and playing that silly Orlando Magic song, you know, whatever it is. I'm not going to sing it for you people. If you haven't checked it, go out to Twitter. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone's remixing it. It's great. Um, but look, Knicks are dealing with their injuries as well. Obviously, you know, no Julius Randle right now. He's working back from uh, shoulder separation. You're talking about OG Ananobi. He just had a minor procedure on his elbow. He's going through contact right now. He should be back within the next week or so. Hopefully, no one said that, but just by the way Tibbs and everybody else has been talking about his recovery timeline, it seems like he should be on, on his way back soon. You have Mitchell Robinson, who seems to be ramping up and on the men. So we're that's another guy we're expecting. But the Knicks as the Philadelphia 76ers have had to do so far, they've had to, you know, maintain their position in the East with, you know, a depleted roster. And for the Knicks, they've been doing, you know, it's been an okay job. It's been up and down. Obviously, most of the injuries started to happen at the tail end of that nine-game winning streak through January, and it was fine. But now you see, without those guys, it's been up and down, losing games that they probably could have won. You know, you lose to the Pacers, you lost to the Magic, you know, you finally beat the Magic when they return, you lose to the Hawks. It's it's just been, it's been tough, and I can only imagine that the Sixers fans are feeling the same way because you know that with a fully healthy team, this team is completely different. And to be a juggernaut based on how both teams were playing at one point during the season or another. So Knicks are in the same boat, but you know, for, for the love of basketball and wanting to see a good competitive game, I'd love to see Maxi at least back. So that way we can get another matchup between Brunson and Maxi again. Yeah. Watching those two play, they're two of the most fun players to watch. In my opinion, Maxi's a blur. Brunson is a maestro uh, and Brunson is an inspiration to all these guys who played like I was only 5'11 playing in high school. So when I watch his bag, I'm like, I don't know how he's doing this. I don't know how he's getting into traffic, keeping his dribble alive, and then hopping back out for a step back. So those two playing in a game makes it really fun. I would love to get both of them in both of those games. But we'll see. Maybe the, maybe the Sixers are cautious. As for you bringing up OG, I looked it up. They were 18 and 15 before that trade. 12 and two with them, eight and nine cents. And he Mm -hmm. didn't get to play with everybody either because that overlapped with some of the other Knicks injuries, right? So if you're a Knicks fan, you're feeling optimistic about maybe being able to return everyone by these playoffs. If you could manage the seeding in the interim, you know, with some of these guys putting up good performances, I think Dante DiVincenzo has really stepped up. Um, he's, He's just become... A, the kind of guy who makes a lot of teams look stupid for letting him go, right? Mm. Um, and Hartenstein, who has been uh, probably overlooked at times in his career, has been who's been hurting the Sixers when we've when we last played him 
he was he was a beast against us in the past. So um, there's a lot of optimism. And you add in Robinson, too. You start to get formidable. Now, you wouldn't have cohesion at that point, but you'd rather you'd rather the talent and and let Tibbs figure the rest out. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, see, shout out to CP. We were talking about this on post game last night, like how. You know, we're talking about when our guys going to return. Like when you think about Julius, you think about OG, you think about Mitch. And to me, it's always that I need Randall to return before the playoffs start. You know, CP said that he believed that, or he didn't necessarily believe, but he wouldn't be surprised, I should say, if Randall came back in April for the first round of the playoffs. And to me, that I, I can't, I can't imagine doing that just because he's a rhythm player one two the he changes a lot like he needs to be incorporated in this new roster and like you talk about Brunson being a guy that you have to work with you also have to work with Julius Randle and those since those two guys are your 1A and or not even one forget the 1A and all that type of stuff those are your top two guys that you rely on uh for, to Brunson's just generate one. offense Brunson and just and being isolation <laughs> scores yeah for sure no Brunson's one Randle's two um I just don't want to go with one A and all that type of stuff yeah. nonsense. But uh but when you think about um but when you think about those two guys, like those guys are what drive the New York Knicks, right? Those are your two best isolation scores. You rely on them, they take most of the shots, they're very tough to guard. Uh they change how teams guard the New York Knicks. I mean, both of them demand double, triple teams, no matter, no matter like who you're playing. So with that, Julius needs to be incorporated much sooner in when he gets back, right? You wanted to incorporate him sooner before the playoffs rather than like OG where he's more of a plug and play guy. I could be okay with him coming back like two games at the end of the season just to get some run before the playoffs. I could live with that. Randall, not so much just because of how good Randall is and what he means to this team. Like he needs to get back into rhythm and he's a rhythm player. Like we saw at the beginning of the season, just coming off of ankle surgery, it took him some time just to find his groove. And then, it would be the same, in my opinion, coming back from a shoulder injury, just because physically you're changing your game. Like he's gonna, he's not gonna want to just go down there and just be as physical as he once was. Like he's gonna be thinking about that shoulder probably. If he doesn't, you know, hats off to him. That's amazing. But that's why you talk about injuries and like guys coming back and like, you know, when when you got want guys to return. That's for me, like how you think that's how I think about that. As to like what you're saying about Joel Embiid, who, you know, you want him to return prior to the playoffs starting. You would love to get Joel Embiid back from a Sixers perspective before the playoffs because it's more for his own conditioning. I'm not terribly worried about the same thing I'd be worried about if I was looking at it from the Knicks perspective, because you're looking at guys like Kyle Lowry, Buddy Heald. We know Tyrese Maxey and Embiid already have a nasty two-man game. So there's a lot of low-usage guys that help around Joel, and a lot of them can shoot. So I do think the cohesion issue is a real problem if he came back late, but I wouldn't be as worried about it as what you were talking about when you're reincorporating a high-usage guy like Randall because right now they're doing pretty well. They're treading water with Precious and Hartenstein, right? And Hartenstein loves to pass. Mitchell's going to bring you a whole other dimension with some vertical spacing and much more of a probably interior presence on the other end. So from a Knicks fan, fan perspective, and OG's a low usage player, you would put him back in there as soon as he's ready. Mm -hmm. um, I have one pessimistic glass half empty Knicks fan friend who's making fun of me saying, uh, Masai sold you guys a lemon. What's up with OG? Was he ever coming back? This chronic inflammation um, so I do, I do think they should play it conservatively um, because his impact was like an all-star level impact when he's out there as a two-way player. And from a low usage standpoint with what he does, you can imagine that's kind of Jalen Brunson's dream to play with a guy like that. Salute to Knicks Nation. Thank you all for tuning in for another Game of the Week preview. We are previewing the New York Knicks facing the Philadelphia 76ers in this mini series for Sunday and Tuesday. With me on the other side is my guy Dave Early. You can catch him covering the Sixers for Liberty Ballers, part of the SB Nation Network. Make sure to support our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to a $100 match. Dave, yeah, yeah like I, I agree with you that Brunson, everybody would love to get OG back. I mean, OG just changes team dramatically defensively knocking down threes when he's open 
I mean, even with the second unit, as time wore on, you got, you started to see him get more comfortable as being that, just to get, just calling his own number and being an offensive hub to some degree. And I'd like him, the only reason I'd like to, for him to get back is so that he can get comfortable yet again in that role. Because when you think about the staggering of rotations, right, or staggering of lineups, OG's going to be with that second unit, probably maybe play some four, although the way that Precious is playing, he could go back to or continue play to the three or or do whatever you want, right? I mean, you could theoretically, let's just say you have Mitchell Robinson out there, you have Precious Achua, OG, Hart, and McBride, and I'm thinking about OG being that guy who could be that offensive hub for that second unit. So my only thing is that if he were to return early, the good aspect is that he gets to practice being that offensive guy for that unit and start to develop that larger role that he wanted while he was out in Toronto. So with OG, hopefully like hopefully we get him back sooner rather than later. And it seems like we're going to get him back sooner rather than later. But the other thing is too, like because of his injury history, and I understand <laughs> your pessimistic Knicks friend, like, yes, this guy's been a guy that's notoriously de dealt with injuries. Even when he was on the Raptors, when they won the championship, he didn't play because he was dealing with an injury. So I, I get that as a Knicks fan who, you know, looks at the team through that lens, like, can we even trust this guy to be healthy when it's going to matter most for sure? Yeah. And the Knicks, you know, from the Knicks fan perspective, there have been quite a few, I know the most discussed element of it is Leon doesn't talk to the press, but the other low key element is that some of these Knicks injury updates remind you a lot of some of these sixer updates where they're vague and they mm. start off as very minor, but then a guy like DeAnthony Melton is just out. Robert Covington is out. And they, what start as back soreness, knee swelling turns into this, I guess, season ending thing. And you don't hear about it for a long time. And I know Knicks fans have lived that and have seen some of that with guys like Mitchell Robinson in the past. Um, Remember the Nerlens update was oh, I was just a minor foot in the preseason and <laughs> I mean Dave you don't we don't have to go through this I mean yeah yeah Knicks fans were holding their breath when Jalen Brunson went down against the Cleveland Cavaliers and oh. they're like he's questionable it's like wait well stop 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 stop, 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 stop. stop. it's like wait <laughs> is this is it actually questionable or are you guys just playing you know right. those mind games right now and, and a little bit of sports gamesmanship just to keep the opponent on their toes so I totally understand that and a big element of that. You know, having spoke with some some members of the front office of different teams, um, is the players themselves. They have quite a bit of say, more than I think the average fan realizes. When we see a vague and annoying update, it could simply be that the player doesn't want his own personal medical health released, and the team has to mm -hmm. respect that to some degree. On the other end of it, there's big money in gambling, and people want to know if they should be betting on him to hit three and a half three pointers tonight or not. And then he <laughs> So, you know, our guys on uh, sleep. What is it? Um, what's your guys' sponsor? Underdog Fantasy. Underdog Fantasy. Yeah, I'm on Underdog, so I get it. Yeah, look, man. I mean, we all need to know who's who's going to be hitting over three and a half. Uh, who's could we take the higher or the lower? Who's who's doing what tonight? Exactly. I mean, you know, last night I'm sure everyone's wondering, will Dante DiVincenzo hit higher than three and a half threes? And you know, like he's out there, right? And, and obviously, everything changes with. How who's out there on the court? How healthy is the team? How many shot attempts he's going to take? So everyone needs to know, man. I get it. I totally yeah. get it. But let's keep this thing rolling, though. So, uh, what's your what's your standing on like the Sixers now with all the injuries that they that they feel? Do you actually believe that this team will get out of the playing category? Or do you think they will stay in the playing category and then they have to work their way through that playing tournament? I'm looking at the upcoming schedule as we speak. At Bucks, at Knicks, at Knicks, at Bucks the Heat, and then they got this brutal road trip at Suns, at Lakers, at Clippers, at Kings, Clippers again, Cavaliers. So I do expect the play-in. Um, mm. I was half joking, half not joking, debating should fans be hoping for the play-in and then tank the play-in, because then at least you get a 3% chance at a top pick in the draft. So you don't even want, you're thinking the Sixers should you make the playoffs at all this season just because of the Joe Allen beat injury? I mean, if they don't trust that he's going to come back and be in conditioned and able to lead a team through the plan and then through, can you imagine what that path to the title would look like? You might have to deal with a team like the Knicks or the Bucks first. You might have to deal with the Cavs first. And he's just getting his legs back. And like you said, not quite 
certain of the shoulder for Randall, for the knee, for Joel. When Joel has one issue, he sometimes picks up other issues. He, We haven't seen him calibrate his game to a degree like we used to see Duncan or now we see Jokic where I'm going to play, but I'm not going to take many risks. Joel's out there. He's going to go for those track down blocks like Anthony Edwards got the other day. Mm-hmm. He's going to go, he's going to go flying into the third row. So I think you should be mindful of that. Obviously I don't think the, the Sixers will tank. Those days are over. Tyrese Maxey's going to go for it. They're going to try to win the championship this year. And I think there's some, you know, some level of optimism within the front office and the coaching staff that that possibility exists if you return a guy like Joel, um, if they can tread water in the meantime. But that said, from the fans' perspective, it's starting to get on that cusp where it's like, what does the playing get you? I mean, are you going to win the championship from the eighth seed? I guess Miami will tell you, sure. But yeah, I mean, Miami is like the story that you want. Same thing with the Lakers last season, right? They came in through the play and went all the way to the Western Conference Finals. I mean, that's Adam Silver's dream where the plan just adds more intrigue. Somebody can potentially make it out and they go on a deep playoff run. Uh, I mean, look, even when the New York Knicks went to the NBA Finals, they, they were an A seed, right? That's right. Um, so it, it's it's something that everyone likes to see that underdog story. Everyone can get can rally behind that. So I totally understand it. But I'm just a little shocked that, you know, that you would want the Sixers just to just say, you know, let's forget this. Let's go into the lottery and just let's try again next year because, you know, with Joel Embiid, he's not getting any younger. He's 30 this season. We know that this guy's dealing with multiple injuries. He's dealt with injuries in the past, what seems like every single season. What makes this one so much different and what gives you confidence that going into next year it's even better? Well, if I was – Part of the Sixers organization, I wouldn't want that at all. I would gun gun for it. You don't want to mm-hmm. waste a year of his prime. If he's in practice and he says he's good to go and he's medically cleared, you're going to see what you got. But from this perspective, we're getting existential now, so bear with me. No, from okay. This, from let, me, this pers- let, me, let, me, let me strap in and get my seatbelt ready. <laughs> yes, from the perspective of a jaded fan who has seen Joel struggle with injuries in almost every playoff except 2020, you know, there's when there was a mask in two years, there was a torn finger, there was an LCL, there was a meniscus, and he's just not the same guy under those conditions. And that's when they were looking at a one seed or a three seed and looking at hosting very, um, you know, what would uh, Clyde say? Very auspicious paths to the finals where you can, <laughs> you can, <laughs> you can make it. He's going to have fun with Shake Milton. I, I know that. Um, but yeah, I think that from an, from the perspective of a fan who knows that what my rooting interest has nothing to do with anything, I could see the benefit of if it does so happen that he's not ready and the right move is to play it conservatively because they're an eighth seed going into the plane or whatever. Maybe you don't rush them back. I don't know. And if and if they didn't, I could live with it. I, I just find that a little hard to believe, man, especially when this is not even like it's not even like last year's draft or years prior where you have a clear cut number one pick like this is a good draft if you want additional role players and maybe that's something that the Sixers could consider saying you know what we got our guys in Maxi and Embiid but I mean I don't know man I just feel like that's just wasting a man's prime and I just don't see like I, you said the organization would go full head full steam oh, ahead yeah. if he's ready to go but I just I'm don't just even talking see... about the separate fan what yeah, do I just you, don't uh... I just don't understand that as a fan perspective too, because it doesn't necessarily guarantee you anything like with tanking and stuff of that nature. I mean, we've seen this time and time again. So that's why to me, like I get you want to protect Joel Embiid just because of his extensive injury history, but at the same time, like you never know, man. You just gotta take it because I think what sometimes we forget to take into consideration as fans is that, yeah, what could the other team go through? Are they going to go through injuries? I mean, we've seen that years. Look, look at Miami dealing with Giannis Antetokounmpo last year for the Milwaukee Bucks. He gets a back injury, and then next thing you know, it opens up the door for Miami to defeat the Bucks and go on this run to get to the NBA Finals. And you can even look at that last, you know, the Eastern Conference Finals between the Celtics and the Heat. Tatum rolls his ankle. Maybe, I don't know if you're a big Tatum believer or not, but you could say, hey, with Tatum rolling his ankle, it opened up the Miami Heat to go on another, to go get to the Eastern Conference final, to get to the NBA Finals because Tatum couldn't play at full strength. So, yeah, I don't and, know, man. I, I'm just never, I'm never in that mode like, oh, let's just punt and do what the Dallas Mavericks 
did last season. And I'm still salty off of that because we could we could have had their draft pick. Yeah, you know, pick and just say, hey, what's 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 throwing the towel? They, you still had a coin flip chance at it, I believe, right? But we um, did. We did. I, ha- I hear you, and and the, to your point, the Milwaukee Bucks won the championship because injuries to Harden and Kyrie, and then Chris Paul had a wrist, I think, in the finals. So you never know. And what I'm saying is usually sacrilege to most fans. But I'm looking at DraftKings odds now. When you're plus eighteen hundred, maybe a three percent chance to win the title for the Sixers. Not far off from what your chances of would be in moving up and getting a top four pick if you were in that lottery. Um, so if you're looking at those as the same odds, just simply being the 14th seed and the last team in the lottery has that chance to move up. And even though it's not a strong lottery, the Sixers already have five picks to trade. If one of those was a top three or four pick, Maury could probably work with it pretty well this off season, but th- throw that out for me being just a wildly pessimistic fan at times. <laughs> I'm not speaking for Sixers nation here. I'm speaking from the jaded fan perspective. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Uh, <laughs> last thing before we get into this matchup, you guys did make a move for for Buddy Hill. You got Kyle Lowry on the team now. How have those guys been working out uh, for the Sixers? I love the Buddy acquisition. Um, I wrote just before Daryl Morey said they only used three second round picks, and I think they might have got the best player who was traded at the deadline, not counting guys like OG who went before Pascal. But is he better than Boyan? I, you know, what do you think? Is he better than Bogey? Um, is who Buddy healed? Yeah, is healed better than Bogey? It, uh, probably. I mean, he's more of a knockdown score and more Might consistent be. offensive threat. And I know Knicks fans haven't been thrilled with Burks. No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. We're not. We've not been thrilled with CP's guy Alec Burks. Okay, <laughs> a, as we had one caller say, come in, throw him in the trunk. Apparently, she wanted to get this guy thrown into a trunk, throw him into the to the river. You know, and never see this guy again, which is a little extreme. But I know he's having a. He hasn't been performing that well, but my goodness. But hey, I no, think Burks has not been Burks... doing well. And, and I'll say this, Boyan as has not been, you know, great either, but you could at least say that he's given you some moments where you're like, oh, okay, well, that's that's not too bad. At least he's given us some 20 point performances. You know, he's coming off the bench where, you know, it's not like he's a starter and giving you 20 points of being a turnstile on defense. It's much different. So he's at least done something versus what Burks has done. So to answer your question though, in a long roundabout way, yes. I would say Buddy Hield has been uh, more is better. Yeah, I'm I'm really happy with the Buddy acquisition, and I do think there's a chance they can retain him at an affordable price, which would be excellent. If they lost him, hey, they only parted with three second round picks, um, and they they spent four picks and they got two back at that deadline. And going back to Burks, I'm pretty sure Burks was teammates with Shake Milton in the bubble, and there were times where Shake stole his lunch as the better better options so picking up shake there it's not you know if he's healthy and that's always the issue with him um he can come off the bench he's not a knockdown three-point shooter and he's not a great defender but he can definitely get you buckets uh and sometimes he gets hot i mean he's got he has got a little bit of dog in him i'll warn some of you and your fans because he did stand right up to joel i think when he was still a second year player Mm. got in his face and told him off when he was right and in the next game he hit a a game-winning shot in the bubble against the Spurs, I believe. So he dropped, I don't know, almost 40 points against Doc Rivers in LA once when everybody else was out of the lineup. So I I have seen some pretty nice things from Shake. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a solid signing for the Knicks. I mean, we got him off of waivers. You know, uh, with Shake, I'm not looking for him to, at this point, get many minutes because McBride has been a revelation so far since he's entered the rotation. Precious is another carry. guy. It wasn't a um, carry. Yeah, and then you talk about if you get Mitchell Robinson back, that's three, and then obviously Josh Hart's not going anywhere. So that's four guys. If you're talking about Tom Thibodeau, nine-man rotation, you got nine right there. Shake is just insurance just so you have a a guard that can control the rock. Um, I I think that's more going back to the guy that we spoke about, uh, who I like to say Beetlejuice. Um, It's more insurance on him, man. I will not say his name because, you know, three times then CP pops out of nowhere and starts talking (laughs) about his guy. So, look, it's more insurance for that guy than anything else but you know the thing that you go back with the Knicks man is just it goes back to health I like the way that they've been performing while this team has been you know undermanned and 
that's where this matchup is going to look really good. So let's let's talk about this matchup. But before we do, I'm going to tell everybody to make sure to support our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to a $100 match. And everybody out there, listen, I love using the app. It's so much fun. When I'm watching the games, whether it's NFL, NBA, no matter what, I like to pull up Underdog Fantasy, put some money down the line, and just try to make some money back, man. Just because I watch so much, just because I watch so much sports, why not try my why not try my luck? So the cool thing about this app is that you get to use, like I said, any sport, NFL, NBA, MLB, whatever it may be, and you get to choose any statistical category and just choose higher or lower on what the player is going to do. So for NBA, right, you can choose points, rebounds, assists. You can do a combination of all three. You can do free throw attempts. The list goes on, as you see right here. And, and so here's from a previous uh, a previous wager that I did with underdog uh, a few a few nights ago and here you see like how it's used you can just pull down and see the drop down for all selections for players like Randall and Brunson and so forth and so I like it it makes it simple you can choose anywhere between two to five players the caveat is that you must choose two you must choose two players from two different teams so you can't choose a, a ticket of all Knicks all right you cannot choose a ticket of all Knicks you have to choose somebody from the opposing team or multiple teams when you put in your slip so makes it that much simpler uh, to use the app. And then on top of that, if you're not feeling lucky, we think you can get all your selections to, to hit. So if you choose three and you don't feel all three can hit, you can go the insured route. So only two of three need to hit. So you can still earn some cash. That way you can get your drink. You can go get some lunch money, whatever it may be. So make sure when you do so to download the app, have a good time. All right. And make sure to support our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to $100 match. And yeah, also check the pinned message in our uh, in the chat right now if you're watching live to to use the promo code KFTV to go download the app and to go find Underdog Fantasy right now. Shout out to our sponsor, guys. Shout out to our sponsor. Also, last thing I'll say, there is drafts too. So you don't have to just do pickems. You can do drafts as well through Underdog like CP, JD, and myself have been doing. JD won last night. You know, I won not too long ago. CP still in the doghouse, and don't worry. The next wager we're doing, we're gonna see, we're gonna send CP out there because we know he's gonna lose the next one. Send him out to Cleveland and go on a whole week's tour of traveling Cleveland and trying all the best eats out there because you know that's what he's looking forward to. So, that being said, once again, support our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to a one hundred dollar match. All right, Dave, let's wrap this thing up. Let's talk about this matchup. We're gonna go a little different. We're not gonna talk about, you know, all, uh, uh, we're not gonna talk about like who we think the the key matchup is. We already know we've done this before. It's Maxi and Brunson, okay? But let's just talk about the game itself and what we expect because both teams are in a hole right now, being injured. So, where do you think in this mini series? Where do you think this Sixers team is gonna go? Do you first think Maxi is gonna be back? I feel like he would have to be back just because you don't want the Sixers to fall too far. As we record this, uh, he was working hard at practice. I saw some clips of it on Twitter, and I think it was Lauren Rosen who posted. The way he was moving, I, I would bet on him giving it a go. Now, I, obviously, I think that depends on the medics and the concussion protocol and checking your eyes and all that stuff they do in the blue tents. But I would bet on him to play, and that's obviously your key matchup right there. If not... The weight's going to fall on guys like Tobias Harris, Buddy Heald. Um, we're not positive that Nico Batum will be back, but I think he will be too. And so you're facing a much different look. But if Maxi's out there, they can steal a road win. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing is, will Maxi be back? And then that will change just how, as you noted earlier, how Tom Thibodeau will game plan defensively to stop him. Do you trust anybody outside of Maxi just to carry this team? Do you trust somebody like Tobias Harris? Do you trust somebody like Buddy Heald to, you know, rise to the occasion? Because for the Knicks, I would like, even though we have Joe Brunson, I know he'll be out there. He seems to be on a minutes restriction, even though it hasn't been, you know, even though this is Tom Thibodeau and, you know, that can go out the window anytime at this, mm -hmm. at any point. Um, I still have confidence in guys like Dante DiVincenzo, Precious Achua, Josh Hart to go out there and one of those guys to rise to the occasion and give some solid minutes and some solid offensive production to help the help Brunson get a victory. Is Do you trust any of those guys I mentioned for the Sixers, though, like Buddy Heald, like, like uh, Tobias Harris? I mean, Tobias has been in a massive, massive funk like one of the worst of his careers. 
He broke out of it in Dallas and dropped 28, and they stole the win against Kyrie and Luka. Maxi had 24 that night, so it can be done if they're both out there um, because I think Dallas is a good team. But without Maxi, no, I wouldn't trust anyone to go in there. You're a Knicks fan. You know that you sit there and you watch those games, and there's always someone who just randomly drops 30 on you, and you were like, why us, right? Yeah. Um, we could go through our heads of all these guys you didn't expect. So it happens at the garden. I think there's something about the lights and MSG. Not this season. Not no, this no, season. not, not this season, but in over the last 20 years, we've seen what feels like a million times. Um, so I guess it's possible a guy like buddy just hits 12 threes and they steal a win, but I'm not betting on that on, uh, on any apps. <laughs> yeah. This season, uh, this season has been, Quite the revelation for Knicks fans, just because you talked about like we could think about Ricky Rubio, Zeke Naji, guys like that that just come through the garden, uh, you know, and, and just put on a spectacular performance. And you're like, why is this guy now going off? Right. And Trey Lyles, what a who? And then, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not anymore. Now you come to now you come to Madison Square Garden, you get beat with metal bats just because <laughs> that's how the Knicks roll now. Look, they just stopped the Orlando Magic. Magic could have cracked 80 last night. So that should give you an idea of how good this Knicks defense is. So, uh, for the Knicks fan, like if you don't have Maxi, I just see the Knicks just stopping everything. Like it, it's just that much easier for them to game plan just because. Who is that guy that you can just say, here's the ball, go score in isolation on that Sixers team? Yeah, that's not, I guess that would be Tobias Harris they would turn to for that. Um, in some spots, maybe Lowry, but it would be tough sledding. Since the joke, the Sixers still have like the seventh best offensive rating, but that's mostly because they had the top three rating when Embiid was out there. But since February 1st, they dropped down to 21st. Since that same timeline, I peaked, the Knicks are around 20th. So they're not um, putting the lights out either with their with the Randall loss. But they are grinding out wins. And without Maxi, it's hard to see them not being able to grind one out and slow the Sixers team down with defense. Um, let me ask you a, a random question. Because you mentioned Tibbs and how things can go out the window. In a perfect world where everyone comes back, for the Knicks, do you think it would be challenging for him to go against his instincts and play like a nine-man, ten-man playoff lineup? Or would he really try to settle on what he normally does and just grind his guys? How deep um, do you think? I mean, the Knicks are like the deepest team in the league when healthy now. So how deep would Tibbs be willing to go, in your opinion? Nine-man. He did that last season. He'd go on with the nine-man rotation. He did that last year. I wouldn't – I mean, he was doing that prior to the – Prior to the OG trade and then after the OG trade, you know, those guys were playing a lot of minutes. I get it. Um, you could, I know it was short lived too, but the more I think about it, like you can make the argument and not say I'm like a big fan of like guys like playing 40 minutes per night, just because it, it, look, you, you play that long enough, it will cause wear and tear on the body, right? And you need these guys fresh for the playoffs. I mean, you listen to any coach. You just listen to the guys, how they manage players' minutes, whether it be Giannis Antetokounmpo. You can look at how Jokic was managed last year just to give some rest during that, like, third quarter to last quarter of the season just so that he was really fresh to make that down postseason heading run. into the playoffs. Yeah. Like, you it see probably that cost team. him the MVP. Yeah, and, and look, it cost him the MVP, but you see that it paid dividends because you had him where it mattered most. Finals so, MVP. So, um, look – I think I, I like to see that strategy used, but I could, what I was going to say is that you can argue that because it was a new starting five, you got to play the more minutes one, because uh, they're, they're trying to get in rhythm. They're trying to get accustomed to each other's playing styles, right? Two, the bench was new too. So they need to get acclimated and you don't want to rely heavily on them. And at that time they weren't giving you enough offensive production where you could go to them. Now things are different. Now you could say it could be more equitable uh, playing-wise just because that the guys who have had to step up while Randall, OG, and Mitch have been out have gained a lot of confidence where now if you ask them to come off the bench, they could still produce at a solid enough level where you can give guys like Randall, Brunson enough time to get a breather. And so that way they feel refreshed coming in, uh, whether it be – end of the second quarter or the fourth quarter, wherever it may be. So I think times have the times have definitely changed. Like the dynamics have definitely changed during the course of the season due to the injuries that the Knicks have 
once faced. So I, I wouldn't be surprised with Tibbs going with the nine man rotation and, you know, doing what he did last season. I think he's totally capable of doing that more than that. Now he said, could he do a 10 man rotation? We did see that one point his first year on the team, but it was just Julius Randall, RJ and Derek Rose, which is much different than having Jalen Brunson, OG Ananobi in your starting rotation. So I wouldn't see a 10 man rotation. I think Does, if it you is think 10, McBride sticks. I, do I think who sticks McBride? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think he sticks. I don't see him not, I don't see him leaving the rotation defensively. He's been awesome. He's been knocking down the threes at a better rate. And now he's starting to attack the paint and get downhill, which is what Tibbs likes from his guard. So if he can continue to do that, he's walked in. He's walked well, into that, that rotation. Maybe that costs you Beetlejuice down the stretch. Yeah, that, that does cost Beetlejuice <laughs> down the stretch. All right. That does cost Beetlejuice down the stretch. So I see, I see Tibbs going with the nine man rotation to answer your question. And I could ask you, you know, the same question because Nick Nurse, when he was out in Toronto, got the name Nick Thibodeau. <laughs> and I know he likes to grind his pro airs, and and we've seen that in Philly this season. What do you think he does? Oh man, that's a good one because the way he's probably looking at it, he hasn't had his full arsenal for the the season, especially with these new guys coming in. So I guess you're gonna have Lowry, Heald, Tobias, Maxi, Joel, Reed. Those guys are gonna stick. Um and that's when you get into probably, I would guess, eight, maybe nine, depending on how um, Joel looks. Hmm. Depending on how Joel looks, yeah. you say he goes nine? I think so. Okay. What is it, be eight? Because I, mean, I know Nick Nurse can go seven or eight. Yeah, I would say eight and a half for Nurse. Um, it, I think it was mostly Kawhi Leonard pushing for his load management, like the one-time Nurse – was really man, you know, managing well. Kawhi sat at every fourth game on average that season they won the championship. But Joel hasn't been built like that. So if Joel's back, I think that he's going to be back back, and that might shorten your rotation a bit. Well, you, you're obviously not going to see guys like Mo Bamba anymore. <laughs> Mo Bamba. We've still been watching Bamba. Mo Bamba still. We got the song still living to this day. Dave, for this game, though, I'm looking at like who you got. Like, let's say Maxi is back, right? Let's say Maxi is back, and we get these teams at quasi strength. Who is your X factor for tomorrow's game that will help tilt in the Sixers' favor? I would I would bet on Healed. I would say Healed getting hot would be the Sixers' best chance to steal. Maxi does what he does. He wreaks havoc in transition. And he's kicking him out to Buddy who uh, who finds the range. Because he's capable of putting up 14 threes in a single game. Um, and then he goes, you know, two for 10 the next time. So if he gets hot, he would be my X factor. But if you asked, you know, 100 Sixers fans, half of them might say Tobias Harris, too. He'd been having, he's been having a solid season. Um, so I can see that. I would go with eh. Deuce McBride. Eh. <laughs> If you, if you, you uh, apparently you feel otherwise. I'm not calling. I, I wouldn't go solid because of the funk he just had. But okay, fine. Solid's probably fair on the whole. Is he in a funk because there's no Joel Embiid? I mean, I think that might be the bigger, the bigger there, cause though. There was this uh, hip impingement issue at one point heading into the All Star break. He is an Iron Man. He likes to play through anything, so he will often not be on the injury report, even when I think, you know, our, some of our reporters will say in the locker room. Maybe he wasn't moving the way he normally does, but I think he's healthy now and I think he's finding a rhythm. So I think we could still get to solid. <laughs> we can still get to solid. My X factor would be Deuce McBride for tomorrow's Ooh. game, just because McBride has just, I I'm looking for him to continue to relieve Brunson of not having to play mo many minutes, especially coming back from a knee injury that yeah. he faced within the first minute against the Cleveland Cavaliers. So I'm looking for McBride in this matchup to continue his strong outing. We know defensively he's going to perform at a high level. Shooting the three ball, it's been much better this year than in years past. And then I am expecting him to continue to get downhill like he has been. And I think as long as he can continue to do that and facilitate, and he's been facilitating very well for this Knicks team, you know, he's going to be able to give Brunson that relief that he needs and then continue to earn more minutes on the court and be just that trusted bench player that Tom Thibodeau is looking for. So I'm going with Deuce McBride in tomorrow's matchup. What about, um, you know, a lot of people in Philadelphia still consider Josh Hart a Philly guy because of the Nova championships. 
Do you think Hart could uh, look to stick it to the Sixers for not drafting him? Uh, I think Hart just always plays with an edge, man. You know, especially at this point, he's been asked to do a lot. He's always playing with an edge. I don't think you need to give him any more of an edge. He doesn't need more motivation. Uh, he doesn't need any more motivation. Um, look, we've seen it during the playoffs. We've seen it anytime. We've seen it over the stretch of games. He's playing 40 minutes. Last night, he's playing with an edge against the Orlando Magic. So I'm... He doesn't need more of an edge. Although he could, you could easily consider him an X factor just because of just because you need his offensive production. Just since the Knicks are shorthanded, but I'm going with McBride in this case. I can tell you, it kills Sixers fans to know that it's the Knicks, a division rival, who have that Nova connection, and mm. also have like Mikhail Bridges kind of hinting maybe one day. <laughs> Come get me, kind of a hint, you know. Save him. We have to save him. Yeah. <laughs> Take me across the bridge. <laughs> have to save him from that woeful team that is the Brooklyn Nets. But we're not covering that team. But, Dave, I appreciate you for coming on the show and helping me preview this game, my man. Please let the listeners know where they can find you if you got any work up and coming. All my work is at libertyballers.com, and you can follow me at David Early, like early morning on Twitter. There you go. Thank you once again, Dave, for coming on and joining so the much. show. Of course, my man. And then salute to Knicks Nation for tuning in for another Game of the Week preview. Once again, I, like I said, the Knicks are facing the Philadelphia 76ers in this mini series that we got on Sunday and Tuesday. So if you didn't catch it today, don't worry. You still got you can still catch it again because the Knicks are playing in the Sixers for two games in a row. So that's what I like, man. That's what I like to see. I like these minis deuce. matchups. You I like the deuce. deuce. The deuce is loose. Yes. And we got deuce right now. Yeah, absolutely. So look. Make sure to support our sponsors, Underdog Fantasy. Use that promo code KFTV to get up to a $100 match. And salute to all of our fan t- franchise channel members for being in here. Salute to My Two Cents. Salute to Perry G. Salute to Constantine for being in here as well. Who else we got in here? Shout out to Two Lifted. Shout out to my guy TM as well. And shout out to all of the mods. We got Gamba the Bard in here. We got Bobby Takio in here. We got Femi. Shout out to you guys. Shout out to you guys as well. Thank you all for tuning in for another Game of the Week preview. Shout out to JJ as well. Where is she? I see you in here, JJ. Who else we got in here? Who else? Got Corey Young. I think I saw, I think I saw a guy, guy uh, Junior Caroma. I think John Talento is in here too. Yep. Shout out to you guys as well. Thank you all for tuning in for another Game of the Week preview. Make sure, like I said, to support our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. And make sure to support KnicksFanTV.com. Make sure to go support our website. Bunch of talented writers over there, always doing the damn thing. So make sure to go check out their work as well. And guys, we'll catch you tomorrow for KFTV Post Game Live after the Knicks play the Sixers the first time. So make sure to tap in then. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up button for your boys. All right, all right, Knicks Nation. We'll catch you later. We out.